in this machine driven era, the interaction between humans and machines is one of the most important aspects to deal with. This is exactly why GUI has been developed. With GUIs or graphical user interface, one can create marvelous and visually pleasing items that allows users to interact with machines. Now creating GUIs is undoubtedly amazing, but it just gets better when same can be done along with Python. So if you are a Python enthusiast and want to create amazing GUIs using Python, hi all, I'm Junaid here from Edureka with an exciting new session on Python GUI. So without any further delay, let's start off with today's agenda. We'll start this session by understanding what is GUI and what are the various components that revolve around it. Then we shall dive directly into GUI development using Python. Following that, we shall discuss various frameworks such as TKinter, Kiwi, PyQt5, and Pygame. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on training technologies. Also, if you're looking for online training certification in Python, check out the link given in the description box below. So let us now understand what is GUI. GUI or a graphical user interface is an intermediate party between humans and machines. So here we'll be making use of this graphical components like icons, buttons, widgets, etc. So what I'm trying to say here is every time we create an application that has a GUI interface, right? We'll be making use of these icons. And here icons refers to individual functionalities of an app. So every time end user manipulates an icon, an event gets triggered, thus executing a block of code in the background. And once that's done, it gives us a desired response. Now to better understand this, let's take an example of an MP3 player. I'm sure everyone at certain point might have used this MP3 player, right? So what is this MP3 player? So MP3 player is actually an application. This application will have certain functions like play, pause the music, shuffle the songs, so on and so forth. These functions here in our application will be represented in the form of an icon. And every icon will perform one specific task or function. So if you want to play, pause the music, you have to manipulate that button that visually represents that function. All right, so to conclude, what I'm trying to say here is the visual representation of function is nothing but a GUI. So now that you have understood what is GUI, let us see what are the various components that revolve around it. No matter what programming language or framework you use, the concept of GUI remains the same, right? So as you see here in the flow chart, there are three basic building blocks of GUI development. So let's start off with containers or layouts. The containers or layouts define the structure of our user interface. So here what I'm trying to say is with layouts, we can place our widgets according to our needs. Well, now you might be wondering, right? Can we place our widgets directly into our application window? The answer for this is simply yes, but we cannot organize or arrange our widgets according to our needs. Few of the examples of the layouts are float layout, grid layout, box layout, and anchor layout. All right, now let's move on to the next main concept that is the main loop. So the main loop performs three important tasks. First one is the capturing of the event. So main loop is constantly waiting for an input from the end user. And once the end user gives an input, the second important task it does is implementing the logic. So whatever the input is received or collected or captured by this end user, this will be fed into the program logic. And the outcome of the program logic will be displayed back out by refreshing the window. So the refreshment of the window is the third important task that the main loop does. The main loop breaks only when an application window is terminated. The next important component is widgets, or we can also say them as components. Widgets or components are the basic building blocks of a GUI experience. So here we are trying to establish a two-way communication link between the end user and the computer. There are various types of widgets that are available for different functionalities. Few types of widgets are canvas, buttons, label, and text input, etc. So these were the basic components of the our GUI. So let us now understand how GUI is developed using Python. We all know Python is one of the most popular programming language among the developers. This will not come to us by any surprise when I say that Python provides support for countless number of GUI libraries. One of many reason is that with Python, we can develop cross-platform applications. So what is cross-platform, right? Well, cross-platform is nothing but we have a single code base for multiple operating systems. Few of the popular GUI frameworks using Python are TKinter, Kiwi, PyQt5, and Pygame. So moving ahead, let us now discuss what is TKinter. So TKinter, or sometimes it can also be pronounced as TKinter, is one of the most commonly used GUI libraries in Python. So what makes this TKinter unique is that we don't have to explicitly install this library as it comes along with Python standard library. So let's now move to our code editor and see how we can implement GUI using TKinter. So the first thing that we are going to do over here is we have to create a main application window. So to do that, we have to call the object of our TK class and then we have to give a reference variable to it. 
So the reference variable that I would be giving here is main window. All right. So now we are getting this error, right? That's because we haven't imported TK inter package. So let's do that. So from TK inter import everything. Perfect. So let us now execute our code and see what happens. So as you can see here that we have successfully executed our code, but hold on. Shouldn't we see an application window here? Well, that's because we haven't called our main event loop. So to do that, we'll take the instance of this TK class. Okay, that's going to be main window and then call the main loop. So let us now run our code. As you can see here that we have successfully created our first application using TK inter. So this is the main application window. So within this application window, we're supposed to add various types of widgets such as labels, button, frames, etc. Let us now add each of this and see how it would look like. So let's start adding off with labels. So what are labels here? Labels are types of widgets that are used to display an output to the end user. So to create a label, all we need to do is call a label class and then we have to pass some arguments. So the first argument that we are going to pass is where should we place our label widget? So it's obviously within our main application window, right? Let's take an instance of our TK class and place over here. Apart from that, as I mentioned earlier, label is used to display some text, right? So in order to initialize that text, we'll use this text attribute and we'll pass an argument over here, something like hello world. All right, and now we have defined our label, but we have not yet added our label to our main window. So to do that, we can either use dot grid method or something called as dot pack method. So what happens in dot grid method is dot grid method will allow us to arrange our uh, widgets in the form of rows and columns. There can be n number of rows. The index of this will start from 0, 1 and so on. Similarly over here, so number of rows over here will also start from 1, 0 and this will continue on till n minus 1. This is what grid does, right? So the another type is the pack. So what pack method does is, so consider that we have this application window, right? The default position over here is this particular part. The pack method will place our widgets at any of these borders. So let us implement these two methods and see what our application would look like. Now to add our label to our main window, let's use pack first, okay? Let's take another label over here. So as of now, we'll copy this. So we are defining another label. Here we'll say this is TK enter. Okay, and now let's run our code. So as you can see here that we have successfully added two labels to our application window. Now let's implement the same using grid method. So we have this grid. We'll also have grid method over here. So within the grid, obviously we have to pass certain arguments, right? Like as I mentioned earlier here, it's going to be in the form of rows and columns. We're going to have arguments such as row. The first one is zero and the column is also zero. And coming down to the second label here, we want it to be placed in row is equal to zero and it would be in the same row and but the column would be different. So it would be side by side. Okay, so this would be one. All right, so let us execute our code. So as you can see here, we have our two labels, which is nothing but two widgets and one widget is present on the left side and the other on the right side. So let's try to manipulate this. Let's try to play with this more uh, rather than placing on the same rows. Let's place them on the same column. So to do that, we'll change our row here and the column will become zero. Let's execute our code. So as you can see here, our widgets are like one below the other. And now let's move on and go to the next type of widget. That is nothing but text input. In order to capture the text from the end user, we have a type of class called as enter. So every time we use this enter class, we can capture any input data from the other side. So to do that, we'll have to define our enter class. We have to tell where we want our enter widget to be. So that's going to be in main window. So there are a couple of other attributes. Uh, let's see a few of them. So let's consider something like the width, right? So let's give the width w y. So we want width to be 50 pixels. And then let's give a border width, like just for the aesthetic reason. Here the border would be five. And now we have to add this entry to our application window. So let's think something like this. Okay, so let's make it creative. So this is our application window. The label one will say something like enter your name. We'll place our label one here. So this would be like column zero, 
and row zero. Right next to that, we'll have another widget that is entry widget. So this would be in column one, but row zero. So whatever the name is that the user has to put the name over here. Similar to that, we have second label. So second label uh, here, we we'll, let's ask the age of the person. So this would be in our first column and the second row. And similar to that, we'll have another entry over here, which would be in the second column and second row. So let's try to implement this. Okay, so before that, let's add this to our main window. So we are using grid here. All right, so here we want it to be in row zero. And the column should be one, right? The second column. Similarly, let's try to create another entry widget here. And here we want it to be in the second row, second column, right? So let us now run this code and see how it would look like. Well, this is the expected output, right? Here we have the, our first label. Let's also change the text of our label here. So this would be enter your name. And the second label should be like, what's your age? So let's run our code now. So as you can see here, we have our first widget. So enter your name. So here we'll enter our name. So coming down to our second widget over here. So what's your age? So I'm 24, so I'll just put here 24. This is not enough, right? So obviously we have to tell our system or somehow we have to put this value to our logic. So to do that, we use something called as buttons, right? So we use button widgets. So what this button widget does is once we are done with this task over here, we can give button widget and every time we click this widget, we can have this uh, printed on our console. So let's implement that. Okay, let us implement our button widget. So we just need a single button, right? So here we're gonna use button. We want to place this button in our main window, obviously. So main window. Let's give some text to our button. No one would understand if there is no text to a button, right? So let's give us click me. All right. And finally, we have to add this button widget to our main window. So to do that, we are gonna make use of grid. Okay. Obviously, this would be in the third row, right? So row would be two. So if it is third row, obviously the index would be n minus one. So it's two and the column, give it in column one. All right, so let's now run this code. So we have this button here, but nothing is happening. So let's enter our name, like enter your name. So also we want our age, hit a click button, but nothing is happening, right? That's because there is no callback function which is assigned to this button. So what is this callback functions? A callback function is nothing but a function that gets triggered when an action is performed on this button. So let's see how do we define this callback function. We can define over here. So def, let's give it as like we can give her any name. So we'll give her as on click. So every time we click this button, right? We want our name and our age to be printed on our Python console. So to do that, we obviously have to extract our text input from this entry point over here, right? So to do that, we'll initialize a variable over here. So let's give it here as my name. Okay, so this is just a variable name. Okay, and then here let's give it as my age. So this entry widget, right? So obviously this my name and my age have the instance of this entry class. This entry class has a method called as get method. So we use this get method to extract all the values that were stored over here. So let's print something like this. Print my name is should be my name. And then we'll give here as and my age is my age. Now we have to bind. Okay, even now if we click our button, right? This function won't be called. So if you want this function to get executed, Every time we click this button, we use an argument in button class called as command. So here command. This will be equal to just the function call. So let's copy this and paste over here. All right, so everything looks good. So let us now execute our code and see how this would look like, right? So here we have our widget, right? So enter your name. So let's enter our name over here in our entry widget. Okay, so I'm Junaid here. And what's your age? So I'm 24 years old. And now we are supposed to click this button. What are we expecting after clicking of this button? So we are expecting that our name and age should be printed out over here, right? So let's click this button and see what happens. 
So as you can see here that we have printed our name as Junaid and our age as well. So this was a basic example of how to implement, you know, basic widgets in TK Inter. So now that we have covered few of the topics, let's create a simple calculator application. Okay. So first let's erase everything over here. Uh, let's first create our outline, right? So we'll have this application window here. And within our application window here, we'll have a text input area. That is the entry widget. Okay. And then we'll have various grids of button. So here this would be like, okay, so we'll have like four grids one, two. All right, so let's add one more over here. So there are five rows over here and the number of columns that we want over here is on the first three rows is three columns. And after that, we'll just need two columns, right? So let's implement this in our program and see what will be the outcome. All right, so to start off, we need to import our TK inter, right? So from TK inter import star now we need to create the object of a tk enter we first create a class and the instance of this class would be present in let's take as root the first thing that we need to do is we need to have this entry widget over here right we'll give one variable here and give here like call the entry widget the first parameter that we are supposed to pass is where we want our widget to be right so it's going to be the main window so here the name of the main window is root then let's have some random width so let's give the width here as 35. Okay, you can give any random value and then we'll give some border width here. Let's give here as five pixels and now we're supposed to add this to our grid, right? So this is the first component. So this is going to be in a row zero and column zero. So E dot grid and this here our row. This is going to be zero. And the column will also be zero. So now that we are supposed to add this various buttons down, but the layout over here is changing, right? So in order to cope up with that, we use something called as column span. So what this column span will do is it's going to initialize the number of columns that's going to be there from the successive rows. Here we have only one column, right? So within this area, we want three more columns. So we use column span. And this would be equal to like we want three, right? So it's going to be three. We also have to add some spacing, right? We don't want it to look congested. So like we have something called as pad X and pad Y as this is the Y axis and this is the X axis, right? So now we want some padding out between these two buttons here. So to do that, we'll just use pad X. Okay. So let's give like 30 pixels. Let's give some comments here. So here we are just defining text input area, right? Now we are supposed to add various types of buttons. Yeah, so let's now add our buttons. Okay, so we need buttons from 9 to 0. And apart from that, we also need buttons to perform addition to clear our screen and also for equals. And then we also need a button to clear, right? And then to perform the compute. So we'll give the name as equal. All right, so let's define these buttons here. So that's going to be like button. So we'll have this button class. Obviously, this has to go within the root. That is nothing but our main window. We'll give the text for our button later. Let's have pad X so that there's a space between each uh, widget. So pad X. Let me quickly erase this diagram here. So we'll give you a pad X value as something like 40 and the pad Y will give here something like 20. All right. And we obviously have to add some function. So we'll just give you a command. We'll not write anything as of now. We'll just give here as just some random value. Okay. And then we obviously have to add this to our main window. Okay. So to do that, we'll just use grid. And then we'll have to define at which row and which column, right? So as we're going to perform the same function for all of these, we'll just copy paste this and change the values later. So let's copy all of these buttons. So we'll add this over here. So let's now give some features over here to our button. So here we have like let this be for nine and the text that we want to represent is nine because this is button nine, right? We want this to be in the second row and the column would be over here is first column. We want this also to be in the first row first row but the column value changes here. So this would be zero one and two and then we uh, let's go here. Let's change this values here. This will be eight 
and this should be for seven. So here this is going to be eight and this is going to be seven. All right. So now let's define for next three buttons seven. It will give you as six, five, and here for four. Similarly, we'll change over here six, five, and four. Now we want this to be in our third row, right? So it's going to be n minus one, so two, same rows. The column value changes, so it's going to be zero, one, and two. All right, for the next three batches of buttons now. So this is going to be for three, again for zero, similarly three, two, one, and then here's zero. So these three buttons would be in the same row, so it would be in the fourth row, that's n minus one, so the value here would be three, and then the column value would be like zero, one, and two. So now we want this button zero like to be away from this, right? So here we like as I've mentioned earlier, like we'll be having grid and we'll have like three set of numbers. And then if you remember in the last two rows, we had only two buttons, right? So in order to change that, we have to change the we obviously the row would change that would be four, but in the column would be zero. And now we have this add button, right? So we'll give here text as addition. So we'll just give the symbol here. And then obviously the row that we want this to be is the fourth row. That's the same row. The column would be one. Now, if you don't add this column span, right? What's going to happen is, as we have mentioned, column one, this would be just below this. We'll add the column span later. So, as of now, let's also do it for the next two buttons here. So, here, this would be for the clear button. And finally, this would be for the equals. So, here we'll just give here a CLS and this to be equal. So, here, let's also define our rows. So this would be in like sixth row. So it's going to be five, five, and the column would be zero and one. Now we have defined our buttons. Let's also define our event loop. So it's going to be root dot main loop. So now we have to define this functions over here. So how we want our function to be is that we have this calculator and we have a couple of buttons here. So every time we give an input to this button, we want this text input area to be updated, right? So if I press one, we want one. And then if I press two, then I want two after that. So let's get on with that. Okay, so we'll have, we'll let's define a callback function. So we'll do for capturing the uh, numbers, right? So here we'll just define the function here. So number, we can give any random name. So I'm giving it as number input. All right, and here uh, let's pass an argument like number, okay? So what's going to happen here is we need this current value, like whatever value that we have entered, right? Using our buttons, we want that current value to be displayed over here. Like if I press nine, I want nine to be displayed over here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we'll just declare a variable that is current value. So in order to get this value, we obviously have to use the get method because this is nothing but entry widget, right? Here e dot get. Now here we'll capture the current value. We also have to delete it, right? Because if you don't delete it, what's going to happen is, so if I have written nine over here, one will be present on the left hand side, but we want one to be present on the right hand side. So what we'll do is first we'll capture this. After we capture this, we'll delete it. Then again, when we put the second number, we'll reprint it along with that, okay? So let's implement that logic here. So in order to clean whatever the elements which are present here, so it will be delete the column and then we'll have end here to delete all the values. And now we have to insert the current value back, right? So e dot, we are again inserting this in our entry widget, okay? So e dot insert, all right. Obviously this would be in the zero column and rows. We want to insert the string value. So it's going to be like the reason why I'm going to use string here is because I can use a concatenate, right? So it's going to be like string, okay? And this would be number plus the current value. So now we have to put this callback function in this command over here, right? But now the issue is we all know this command will accept only the function name. It won't take function call. So in order to come back that we'll use something called as lambda function, okay? So I guess you all know what are what is lambda function. A lambda function is nothing but anonymous function, right? Let's have our lambda function here followed by the name like the name of a function, right? So that's going to be number input. And then we'll pass an argument as nine. Yeah, it's going to be an integer value and here we are going to anyways convert it back. So similarly, we have to do it for rest of the command over here. So it's going to be lambda. 
it's going to return number function and then we'll give eight all right and now we'll also have lambda again here and then we'll have number and we have to pass seven all right so let's do this for rest of the functions but we won't be adding this function to our command over here because here the functionality will be totally different right so for add clear and equals so now what's going to happen is here we have this number value right so if i provide nine so the current value will be nine but also this will be saved over here and after nine if i put on the new value right so the new value would be like considered as one that time it's going to concatenate new value and old value so that we don't get a single digit number so here i've done a small mistake so what we want to do over here is we want obviously the current value first all right so and then we want the old previous value right so let's now create a function for uh, clearing the values so to do that so clearing the values in the sense we have to clear everything in this entry widget right let's have this all this thing we'll do is e dot delete everything here okay so we want everything to be deleted so yeah so apart from that we also need to define a function for summation right so sum of values so to do this what we'll do is we'll take the current value that is going to be number one and then that would be e dot get right that's because number one is obviously present inside this entry widget right so we'll have this number widget over here and now we have obviously every time i get this value when i'm performing addition or subtraction it's obviously between two values right so uh, i need to save the numbers in our list right so in order to do that i'll also create a list over here we'll also define a list okay so let's give las list of numbers okay so this is going to be the list and now we want this list of numbers like every time you add a value okay every time you click a plus button right so it has to like you have you enter one and then you hit plus the one should be erased and it should be stored in our list here so to do that all we'll do is we'll call this list over here list of numbers dot append right we want to append the number one at the same time we also have to delete the entry point right that's because we have to put a new value so let's do that so this will be e dot delete when we clear the values right we also have to clear the values of our list just so that we can perform new compute so to do that we'll just use built-in function so list dot clear so we are done with two so the final thing that we need to do is equals right so this equals is something that is responsible for displaying the output of our values okay so we'll have this def this would be like function name you can give any name so i'll just give you as equals so here what we're going to do is we'll take the current value so that would be from e dot get all right and we'll append this in our list we'll append number one as this would be in the form of a string, we'll just change this to like integer value. Like we'll just perform the compute on the entire list. We have to delete the content of our entry widget there. So that would be e dot delete. So we'll have this sum value here. So let's initialize it like sum. Initially, the sum would be zero. So let's compute our values within our list. So this is going to be four values in list of numbers so the sum is equal to the sum of values right so it's going to be int values we want to print this value obviously on our entry widget right over here so to do that all we'll do is e dot insert and then we'll update the value that is sum this is going to be uppercase so let us now execute this code and see how it would look like but before we execute, we have to add this commands over here, right? So let's do that. We won't be using Lambda function because we are not going to pass any values, right? Any arguments here. So we'll just do the function call here. So for the add method, we had used sum of value, right? So we'll just call the function name sum of values. And next for the clear one, so it's going to be clear values. Okay. And finally for equals, it's going to be just equals, right? Let's give the function name equals so we have added all our methods to our command so let us now execute our code and see how this would look like so as you can see here that we have our simple calculator so now that you can see that we have a simple calculator 
we can input our numbers and it's working totally fine only thing that's not fitting over here is the position of our widgets over here right we can fix that all we need to do is we need to use something called as column span so let's fix that up all right to fix this up uh, what we'll do here is we'll have column span will be two because we have just two arguments here right so will be two similarly for the last one here we'll have column span will also be equal to two so this would be two all right so let us now execute our code let's see if we have fixed this issue so as you can see here that we have obviously changed this but there is slightly there's an issue over here that's because we have to just change the values we have to change the size of our widget over here so let's create a small compute here so if you have plus five so five plus one so the answer over here is six right okay so the reason why we were getting this error over here is maybe because we were computing the uh, integer and sum but no we, we have converted over here to uh, all the numbers into integer right so here we have to define position of our value right so when we insert this value in our entry widget right so we have to obviously pass this position so let's run our code now and see whether it works or not okay so we have two plus one okay so this would be equal to three so yeah so our application is working here uh, with this we come to the end of our tk inter let us now discuss kiwi framework so what is python kiwi well python kiwi is an open source framework that allows us to develop cross platform multi touch applications with kiwi we can develop applications not only for desktop but also for mobile so because of this kiwi framework allows us to provide input feeds from various sources such as keyboard mouse multi touch events etc so now that we know what is Kiwi, let us now jump to a code editor and see how we can implement GUI using Kiwi. So to start off, we'll first create a class. And here we'll give a random name. All right, so it will be demo app. Okay, and this app has to inherit from the app class. All right, this app class is present in Kiwi.app library. So let's import that as well from Kiwi.app import app so this app class will have something called as a build method def build so what is this build method well build method over here is responsible for combining all the widgets and layouts and put it in a presentable form so what this build method returns is a widget or you can also call it as main widget so right now we'll just leave it blank so in order for us to run our application right we have to call something called as run method so to do that we have to create instance of our app class so that's going to be demo app and then we'll call the run method if underscore underscore name is equal equal main then what we'll do is we'll create the instance of this class here so app this app will be equal to demo app right so demo app and now we got to call our run method so over here we have to return a widget right so let us consider here as label widget the label widget as we have discussed in tk inter it is used to describe or display an external message to the end user so this label widget is present in kiwi.uix package so we should let's import that so from kiwi.uix.label import label class so this label class will have certain arguments such as text let's give text over here as like hello world so now how the app works is first it will create the instance of this class and then call the run method so what run method does is it will provide as a platform so the platform here will be the main application window so within this application window we obviously have to add our widgets and layouts so it is a responsibility of a build method to combine all the widgets and implement that within our application window so let us now execute this code and see how our application would look like. So as you can see here, we have created our first application window. So just to get a recap, this run method is responsible for this application window. And as we all know, we have described this text hello world within a label widget, right? And this label widget is present inside the build method. This build method returns the widgets so this widget is present inside our application window so let us now discuss what are the various types of layouts that are available in kiwi 
as we have discussed earlier, layouts are nothing but containers, right? And there are various types of layouts that are available in Python Kiwi. Few of the examples of the layouts are anchor layout, box layout, float layout, grid layout, and page layout. Let us now take an example of an anchor layout and see how we can create a GUI using it. Before we start off, let's see what anchor layout does. So anchor layout will allow us to place a widget either in the center of our application window or at any of its corners. So this will be nothing but top left corner. This would be middle center corner and this would be bottom left corner so on and so forth. So let us now create a GUI application using this anchor layout. So let me erase this program. So to start off we first obviously have to create our class and we'll give it as demo right demo app and this will be inheriting from app class. And we have to import our app class here. So let's do that by from kiwi dot app. Import app class. So now within our app class, we'll have this build method. So def build. So this build method is responsible for returning the parent widget. So we'll fill this later. So to run our application, we have to call the run method, right? So to do that, if underscore underscore name is equal equal to mean, then create the instance of a demo app and call the run method. So what I'll do here is I'll just write demo app and then call run method. So as I've mentioned earlier here, I'll be making use of anchor layout, right? Let's import our anchor layout. So from Kiwi dot UIX dot anchor layout import anchor layout. So let's create a class here again. We can also create our anchor layout here, but just to enhance our readability, we'll just create the anchor layout class here and just return the object of our anchor layout. So we'll have this class and let us give a name here as anchor layout demo. Which will be inheriting from anchor layout. We'll call this constructor. So underscore underscore in it and this constructor will have an argument like keyword orgs. And now we have to access all the components of our anchor layout, right? So to do that we'll use super either we can use this or what we'll do here is We'll erase all these arguments here and just pass keyword arguments. So with this we have all the components of our anchor layout. So now we all know that layout is actually a container, right? So within our container we will obviously be having various types of uh, widgets, right? So let's make use of labels and text input over here. So let's import that first from kiwi. Dot UX dot text input quick brief about text input. We use text input in order to capture the textual content from the end user. Okay, and now we'll import text input class. And also here we'll be needing kiwi dot uix dot label. So we'll import our label class. So now what we'll do here is we'll have like self dot label. And now we'll have our label class here. We can pass some text, right? So we'll give here as text. And let's give something like enter your name. So we have now just created our label class. Moving ahead, we have to add this label class or our label object to our anchor layout. So to do that, we have a method called as self dot add widget. We have to add the instance of this label class. So that's nothing but self dot label. So now we have successfully added our label widget to our anchor layout. Similarly, let's do it for our text input. So we'll have this text input class. So over here where anyways we're going to capture our text so we don't have to provide any uh, arguments here. So let's now add this text input widget to our uh, layout. So it's going to be self dot add widget. Let's add our text input. So self dot text input. So before we execute this code we have to return some value over here right. So here we'll create the instance of our anchor layout demo class and then pass it over here. All right. Another thing that we're supposed to do is so as I've mentioned earlier with anchor layout we can place our widget either at the center or at the borders, right? So let's keep one of our widget in the center and the other one in the top left corner. So let us now execute our code and see how it would look like, right? So let us execute our code and see how it would look like. Yeah, so as you can see here 
that the entire application window has been covered by the text input but we didn't give this right so over here we also have defined our label widget right so why are we getting this so in anchor layout we can have only one type of widget in it and the reason why the text input widget is taking up the entire space is because we haven't defined the size so let's change the size here we'll use this parameter called as size hint so size underscore hint so now here we'll be giving values in the form of tuple and that's going to be like 20% and 20%. So this is nothing but 20% of our entire screen like along X and Y axis. So let us now run our code. So now as you can see right we have our label which is present somewhere in the middle. So what about our label? So as I mentioned earlier right in anchor layout we can have only one widget. So what to do if you have multiple widgets within our anchor layout. So then what we'll do is we'll have another layout. So let me just show you by a diagram. So now we have this anchor layout, right? So this is actually our application window and our anchor layout is present somewhere here. And this anchor layout as I mentioned is it will take only one widget. So now what if we have multiple widgets? Then what we can do is we can create within this anchor layout. We can define another layout within this layout, right? So I consider this is an anchor layout. So within this anchor layout, we can have a grid layout. So within this grid layout, we can define our widgets. So let's see how this works. So before we can do that, let's understand what is grid layout. Well, grid layout is a type of layout wherein it will arrange our widgets in the form of rows and columns. So here it's necessary for us to mention how many number of rows and columns that we'll be using. All right. So before any further delay, uh, let's imp try implementing this. So before we can do that, let's import our grid layout. So from kiwi dot uix dot grid layout import grid layout class. Now let's come in this as of now. First we're going to create an object of a grid layout. So self dot grid layout. So now let's create grid layout class. So this is our grid layout. As I mentioned earlier, we have to define how many number of rows and columns we'll have here. So to do that self dot grid layout dot calls. So this is used to define number of columns. So here we have just two widgets, right? Like label and our text input. We need just one row. So if you have like one row and one column, then it would be side by side like as you can see here. Now what if we want it to be like one above the other? So in that case number of columns would be one and number of rows will be two. So self dot grid layout dot rows. So this will be two. So now we are supposed to place this label widget and this text input widget within the grid layout. So let's do that. So everything remains the same here. The way we define our label everything remains the same. Only thing that would change is instead of adding our widgets like instead of adding our label widget to our anchor layout we'll add it to our grid layout okay so to do that we'll just do self dot grid layout dot add widget self dot label and again we'll use the same thing here self dot grid layout dot add widgets so what we're doing over here now is we are adding this text input widget inside our grid layout so now this grid layout part has to be added to our anchor layout so let's do that so self dot add widget so here we'll just do self dot grid layout all right so let us now execute this code and see how it would look like all right so as you can see here unlike before now we also have our label as well as our text input so why do you think this label widget is too big and this text input widget is too small that's because over here we haven't defined the size of our label widget so to do that we'll just use size underscore hint parameter and then we'll just change it to like 0.2 comma 0.2. So this is nothing but 20%. Okay, let's execute our code. So now you'll see that it's equally distributed, right? But still this was an anchor layout initially, right? We want our grid layout to be like the small size as our anchor layout, but that can be done easily. So to do that uh, all we would do here is change the size of our grid layout. So to do that self dot grid layout dot size int and this would again take a tuple we can give here as like 40% and 40%. All right, so let's run our code. So as you can see here we have our grid layout. This grid layout is within the anchor layout and now within our anchor layout we have a grid layout and within our grid layout we have our label as well as our text input. So let us now try changing this position here from here to this part. All right. So to do that all we need to do is like have the self dot anchor underscore X. 
an anchor underscore y parameter setup. Okay, so let's initialize this. This would take a string value left corner, right? Top left corner. So it's left, and this should be the top. So let's rerun our code. So as you can see here, our grid layout has moved from this center part to this part. So this is how you can create amazing GUIs using Python Kiwi. So these were the basic fundamentals of developing GUI application using Python Kiwi. So let us now move on to the next interesting framework that is PyQt5. PyQt5 is one of the most advanced framework to develop GUI interface. Using this, we can create cross-platform application on a production level. PyQt5 implements around 440 classes and over 6,000 functions. So let us now jump to a code editor and see how we can create GUI using PyQt5. Okay, so in order to create a GUI, right, we first need to create an instance of our application window. So to do that, we have to use something called as Q applications. Okay, so Q application A P P L I C A T I O N, T-I-O-N. And this is present in PyQt.Q widgets. So let's get that. So from PyQt5.Qt widgets, import everything. So we'll assign one variable to this. Let it be an app. So before that, we can also put this within our class, right? Just to keep it more organized. We can put this definition of our application window in a method just to keep it more organized. So let's create here as window. Now we have initialized our application window. We need to add this to our infinite loop or an event loop. So app dot with these two, our application comes into an existence. Okay. Let us create an instance of our widget. So let's take it as which so to create a widget we have this widget class so q widget right q widget and now we want this q widget to be shown so vig dot show let us now call this window function and see what happens so if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equal equal main so create call the window method. So let us now execute this code and see what happens. As you can see here that we have our application window. Let us now add some title to this and after that let's see how we can incorporate basic GUI components like label text input and buttons. So before we do that, let's add some text to our window, right? So to do that all we do is wig dot set window title so here what we'll do is pyqt demo so let us execute this code now so as you can see here we have successfully added title to our application window so let us now move on and see how we can implement like basic gui components so to do that let's create a class right so this class will is responsible for returning all the widgets so to do that we'll have a class here so we'll give the name of the class as like widgets so responsibility of this is to return all the widgets okay this will combine whatever the widgets are defined within this class and put it on our application window and this widget will be inheriting from a widget class so let's take this over here and paste it here we have to import this okay so anyways this q widget is present in qt widgets class so we don't have to import anything now let's remove this part as of now and instead of that let's create the instance of the widgets class this is going to be widget is equal to widgets and then we obviously want this widget to show something so now let's create a constructor so def underscore underscore in it and we'll pass some keyword arguments. So this is something very similar to what we did in our Kiwi. Okay, then we have this super. So this is actually used to access our parent class constructor, right? So let us now see what we shall develop. So we have this application window. It is a responsibility of this widget class to return something to this application window. So let's create our application window in such a manner that we'll make use of layouts as well here we'll create a form here wherein we'll have two widgets here one that says enter your name and another one is a label 
and there is another form over here wherein it asks you a question something like which school you're going to and here you're supposed to provide answer and then we'll have a button now how layout works over here is as this is a vertical orientation right so i mean to say arranging these three blocks so this is in a vertical fashion so we use vertical widgets and these two boxes over here so this is something which is horizontal right so we'll be making use of horizontal widget so before we get back to our coding what we'll do is what our approach over here will be is we'll first design our vertical layout and then we'll define our uh, horizontal layout this horizontal layout will be added to this vertical layout and in turn this vertical layout will be added to this application window so let us implement this uh, in our code so first off we need a vertical layout so let's give it as like v layout so for this we have q v box so now that we have defined a vertical layout let us now define our horizontal layout and add these items here or widgets here so first off self dot horizontal layout so this will be equal to q h box layout so let's give it as one here let's give this layout as horizontal layout one so now we need a label right to describe an output to the end user so to utilize our label what we are going to do is we'll have self dot label one and we'll use something called as q label now let's add some text to our q label self dot label one dot set text so here we'll say enter your name now we are going to add this widget right so obviously this q label or l1 is actually a widget right we'll add this widget to our horizontal layout one self dot h layout one dot add widget so it will be self dot l1 so we also need another widget here so that the end user can provide the input so we'll be use, making use of text area so in order to use text area we'll have something called as q line edit class so let's see that self dot text area so we'll give here as t1 is equal to q line edit so we have to add this widget q line widget or t1 widget to our horizontal layout so self dot h layout one dot add widget so it'll be self dot t1 so now we have so now we have successfully created our layout and widget for our first row so let's do the same for our second row we'll just copy paste the entire code here so we'll take this add over here and we'll do some slight modifications instead of layout one we'll make it as h layout two so this would be obviously the label second l2 so here we want to ask enter school name now let's add this label 2 to our h layout 2 and this is going to be l2 similarly we have to change here text 2 and then yeah now we also have defined our second row it's time for us to initialize this button right so now we have defined our two rows and before we get on to initialize a button let's add these two layouts okay this horizontal layouts to our vertical layout so to do that all we need to do is self dot v layout dot add layout and let's provide the layout name it will be self dot h layout one so similarly we'll do this again here instead of layout one it will be layout two so let's execute this code so far but before we do that we obviously have to add this v layout to our application window right that's over here so to do that what we'll do is self dot set layout and here we'll pass self dot v layout so what we're trying to do over here is we are adding this v layout to our application window and these h layouts and h layout one and two are being added to our vertical layout so this application should look something like this wherein this is our application window this is our h layout one this is our h layout two and then we have two gui components here we also have to add this button right so instead of adding our buttons to any of this layout i'll directly create a button here so i'll initialize a button and add this button directly to our v layout so let's see how we can implement that okay so to create a button what we'll do here is self dot button so this should be nothing but q push button right and then we have to provide a label for our button so click 
So let us now add this button to our V layout. So to do that, self dot V layout dot add widget and self dot button. And this has to come last. All right, so let us now execute our code. Well, as you can see here, we have successfully created this form. So over here we can provide text input. Okay, so enter your name. So it's asking me to enter my school name. So it's SJBIT. Okay, but this button over here is not performing any function. So let's try to attach a callback function to this. So to do that, first off, what we'll do here is we'll go outside this constructor. We'll define a function. So def on click. Although you can give any name you want just for the simplicity sake I'm providing here the on click method and now this method will print Whatever are the contents of our text input? Okay, so in order to get the value of Q line edit, right? All you need to do is just use a text method. So let me show you how we do that. So here My name is so here we have self dot t1 and then we'll pass like text text method and then we'll have we'll do the same for t2 so this would be something similar self dot t2 dot text but still this function will not execute every time the button is clicked so to do that we have to bind this method to our button uh, we'll call this our button instance right self dot button and then we'll have something called as clicked and now once the button is clicked, we have to connect it. So now we'll pass off this function over here. It will be self dot on click. Just keep in mind this is just a function name and not the function call. So let's now execute our code and see how this would look like. So as you can see here that we are getting our application window. Let's add my name. Let's say that I go to uh, like some college like MIT and then i click here so as you can see here we are getting this sentence over here my name is junaid and i have attended mit so this is how we bind a function to our buttons this is all guys when it comes to pyqt5 basics moving ahead let us now discuss what is pi games so what is pi game right pi game is a cross platform set of python module designed for writing video games here it includes various types of computer graphics and sound libraries which can be used with Python's programming language. So let us now quickly move on to our code editor and see how Pygames work. So before we get on to the coding part, let's see how games work in general. So there are two important things when it comes to game development. The first one is that we are able to constantly draw and update our image. So what I'm trying to say here is like consider that this is our application window. And now you have this particular object here and this object is present in point A and you want to move this object to point B over here. So what would you do like if you directly change the position from point A to point B it will obviously look like as if you have jumped right but we don't want that we want a flow motion. So what we'll do here is we'll erase this initial object or original object and then we'll place or we'll draw another new object which is something very similar to this or identical to the original one and we'll place it just after some, some distance okay and in the next frame we'll delete this part and we'll have one more object over here so similarly if you repeat this procedure in a faster pace it will look like as if we are moving from point a to point b in a flow motion so this is the one thing right but this alone is not sufficient because if you're trying to achieve only this part like if you're trying to achieve only this constantly draw and update part it is just a video right but we also need to have a game logic like for example we have some kind of obstacle over here so this object has to go take up this direction so obviously it has to go down and then move forward and so on and so forth right it should be capable of capturing events so this is what is called as implementing the game logic so these are the two main uh, concepts that is going on here. Uh, let me just give a quick recap. The first one is to continuously draw and update our uh, objects and the second one is to implement the game logic. Let us now get down to the coding part and see how we can implement this. Uh, the first off is supposed to import our uh, pygame module. So it's going to be import pygame. Once we have imported this, we are supposed to initialize our pygame window. So it can be simply done by pygame dot init. So with this we have like actually initialize our window. 
So let's try running our application. So you'll see here that we have successfully executed the code, but we didn't see our application window, right? In order to see our application window, right? We need something called as event loop. So as we all know event loop is nothing but infinitely running loop. So before we implement event loop, let's add some attributes to our uh, application window. So let's take up the size. So let's give a size of our window as like this can be any random value. And then here we'll have uh, we'll initialize our screen. So this will be pi game dot display dot set. And here we want uh, we obviously we want a size over here. So this would be take, taking up the tuple. So yeah, so we'll copy this and we'll paste it over here. Let's also set a title to our screen. So that can be done by pi game dot display dot set caption so here it's going to be like our first game or or we can just give it as pi game demo so let us now run our code so as you have seen here that our game window appears and goes off within fraction of a second so well there is nothing wrong in this only thing that's happening here is like it's executing this code moment this line of code gets executed it's obviously going to close down to prevent that we can either use a delay or we can also add an event loop which will infinitely run this program till we close our application. So moving ahead now uh, let's create something like this. Okay. So moving ahead what we'll do here is we'll have this application window right within this application window. We'll first try to get one image. So this image it can be anything and then our next task would be to move this image freely within this application window. All right. Let's see how we can implement this game logic here. Let me erase all of this as of now. So first and foremost, we are supposed to import our module, right? So import Pi games. Okay, so just to make sure it's well organized, what we'll do over here is we'll create a function here, def. And now within this, we'll we'll initialize our Pi game module. So Pi game dot in it. After that, obviously we have to set our display, right? So screen. We can give any name here. So this is just a variable. So this screen, this would be equal to pi game dot display dot set mode. So the first parameter over here is going to be the size of our screen. So to do that, we have to pass a tuple, right? So we'll we'll do this over here size. So let's give like 500 cross 500, and then we'll pass this size uh, over here. Looks good. Now we are also supposed to add like some kind of caption right like just to uh, just to show what's happening in the window. So to do that we'll use pi game dot display dot set caption. All right, so let's give the name here as pi game demo. So so far we have just done uh, like we have initialized our screen. We have added a caption to our screen. Now let's add some more features to our screen. All right, let's add some background here. As you have seen earlier, right? Like before executing this code, uh, the screen was black in color, but we don't want that. So to change the background, all we'll do is screen dot fill. Here we'll pass a tuple of RGB values. So let's give some random values here. So now we have successfully added background color to our application window. So moving ahead, we like as I mentioned earlier, right? We or we need some kind of object within our screen. Okay, so let me draw that once again. So this is our application window and we need this particular object. So this is nothing but external stuff, right? So we usually call this as resources in order to like get this resources. We use something called as load method and let's try doing that now. Apart from that, make sure whatever resources you're trying to incorporate over here. They are present within the same directory, right? And so let's now copy this path. And let's load our resources over here. So to do that, let's give some caption here. So here we'll have like block. Okay. So now to load our resource, we have like we go for like pi game dot image, and now we have this load method here. And we shall now provide the path. All right. We'll also add a method over here called as convert. The reason why we are adding convert over here is 
like for example if this image is in some format or like if the frame rate of our application window is too high so with this what will happen is pygame window will automatically adjust to the current frame rate so that's the reason why we add convert although it's optional so now we have loaded our image into our program okay but we haven't still added this to our application window so to add this to our application window we use something called as blit and this blit method is present inside this part okay screen so we'll call our screen object here and the screen object will contain blit now we should pass the object of this image here so that's going to be a block and after that we need to specify the position of our block so this will be a tuple value which you take like you can give any values over here so this can be 0 comma 0 so let me speak a bit about a positioning of this okay x and y axis in this pi games right this point over here okay this line over here represents the y axis and the value over here is 0 for y and as i move down over here the value increases and similarly this part is the x axis and this is going to be 0 and as i move over here right the value of the x axis increases so here it's going to be something like obviously the y axis right so it's moving from origin to over here so x axis is anyway zero and as for y axis it's going to be like some some value some value from here to here so let's take it as five so it's going to be like zero comma five so this is a little bit about how positioning works in pi games so now we have successfully added or loaded our image to our screen all right so let us now create our main loop so what is this main loop like as we have discussed earlier right main loop is something which is an infinitely running loop right and it terminates only when an application window is terminated so let's create something like that so while let's have something like running that's nothing but while application is running so now here running right so if you want this to be infinite loop so we'll give here as running is true well running is true so now we have our infinite loop and now uh, this will run like as long as it wants okay so let's execute this code uh, so far okay so we'll give some pass over here so before we execute our code right we also have to update these values to our screen so in order to do that you can there are two ways you can either use like flip method or update method both are almost the same so here we'll have like pygame dot display dot flip you can also use update all right let us now execute our code well you'll see here that our program is executed right but there is no application window well that's because we have defined all of this inside a method and we didn't even call this method so let's do that first so if this is the situation let's call our game over here okay so the game method all right so let us now execute our code again so as you see here right we have our application window and now none of these buttons will work the reason is because we haven't added any events but let's see what are the features that we have added first off we have initialized our window so yes we have our window we have our display over here then we have also set our caption by game demo then moving ahead we have loaded our image and then added this loaded image to our application window so yep we have already done that and also we have set our background so here we have also added our background color so like by default it's going to be black but now we have added some random value which looks like purple so the reason why this window is not shutting down is because we are running this infinite loop so let us now add some events over here in such a manner that every time we click a button right like we click this navigation button up left right down we are able to move this block anywhere we want within this application all right so moving ahead let us what we shall do is we shall add some event over here wherein if i click our navigation button right like left right up and down we want to move this block of code so one more thing no we we can't directly terminate our program over here so in order to terminate this application window we have to stop executing our code okay so yep we have forcefully terminated our application over here so let's add some event so if you want to add event right we have like event handlers here which is present in like event dot get method so like for event in let's call our pygame module pygame dot event dot get all right this is going to be a for loop 
what's happening over here is this pygame.event.get will return as a list and now we'll iterate over each of those lists. Like let's see there are various types of event that are present right key up key down so on and so forth. So it's like what we want our logic to be is if we press the button that's nothing but key down we want to manipulate our application right we'll write that so if event dot type if event dot type is equal to pi game dot key down so you can see here we have various types of events over here so it can be backspace anything it can be anything so we want it to be like key down if the key has been pressed down then we should see which key has been pressed down so if event dot key So this is going to be like pi game dot key down. All right. As of now, we'll write here pass. We'll manipulate. We'll define a function for this later. But let's copy this for all the four directions. Okay. So it's going to be like here, here, and over here. So uh, if becomes else if. So it's going to be lf. Similarly over here. And again over here. We have event dot key, right? So it's key down. Let's make it as like up. Okay, key up, key down, and then we have right and left, right? So it's gonna be like right, and then it's gonna be left over here. So every time a key is pressed down, right, it will see which key has been pressed down. Apart from this, if you remember, right, in our application window, we were unable to close our application window, right, using that close button. So we had to close our application window by stop running our application. So in order to prevent that what we'll do here is we'll add one more event here. So else if event dot type. If this is equal to pi game dot quit. So quit is that cross button here. Okay, it's a closing of our application, right? So this is going to be caps all if this is a situation we want to close our application. Oh, yeah, this is going to be LF, right? All right. Now that's gets it done. So what we want over here is we have to close our application, right? So if you want to close our application window, right? Or our game window, we have to ensure that this while loop is terminated. So to do that, we'll change the value of running to false. So it's going to be running is equal to false. Perfect. Okay. And anyways, as I mentioned earlier, we are using this flip method here to update our screen. Let me mention that over here in the comments. All right, so let us now execute our code and see how this would look like. So as you can see here that we have now got our application window as you will see here we are not getting this error right application not running apart from that we can now even close our application by clicking on this button. So let's try doing that. Well, yeah, as you can see we have closed our application. All right, so now we want to manipulate the location of our block right. So to do that we obviously have to change this position over here. Fine. So to do this we'll create a new method here def block. Movement. And over here we'll pass an argument like screen. Okay, so we'll pass this argument screen or we'll pass this object of our screen. So it's going to be screen here. And what the screen will do is. It will have the object of our set module, right? All we need to do is screen dot blit, right? So screen dot blit. So anyways, we have to update our block. So it's going to be like block. And then the positions. We also have to pass block as an argument here. And to just simplify our code, what we'll do here is we'll have X. So X over here will be equal to like zero and then Y here will be equal to zero. So these are nothing but the positions of our block. So it's going to be X comma Y. So now we have this method and we, we also have to pass X and Y parameters. So X comma Y. So we'll update this over here X comma Y. So this will give us the current position, right? So let's comment it out over here. Fine. So screen. This gives the object. So the screen over here will give us the object of this right object of display dot set module. And now block. So this gives the object of our image right so image. And finally we have X and Y there are nothing but coordinates. 
So what we're going to do over here is every time we want to move our object. So we want to move our object from one position to this position. We have to take small small steps, right? So that it it looks like uh, it gives a look like as if there's a flow. So to do that, what we'll do over here is we'll first get down over here. So let's go here and when the key is pressed up, right? So we'll call this function. So block movement. Okay, we'll pass the object of our screen and then we'll also pass the object of our block. And now what we'll do is if we have to move up and down like now we have to pass the value of our coordinates. So let's let me give you a brief over here like as we have mentioned earlier, right? So this is X coordinate and this is Y and this starts from zero over here. Even X starts from zero. So now if you want to move down right X value remains the same. It is the Y value that we are manipulating and we are when we are trying to move from left to right or right to left. We are manipulating only the X values. So let's create a logic something similar to that. So now what we'll do is as it's moving up right. So up means we have to obviously manipulate our X value. So here we'll give something like Y moving up. So it's going to be like minus is equal to 10. The reason why I'm putting minus is because here it's opposite. OK, so if you want to move down the value is going to be positive. The value is incremental only when it's moving down. OK, so it's going to be 0 1 2 over here and 3 and so on and so forth. So now we'll pass the value of X and then value of Y. OK, so this is for the key up movement and now for the key down movement. So Y plus is equal to 10. So we'll just change by a small value. So this should remain the same. All right. So now let's do it for the left and right. So over here we're going to change the position of our X right when the block is trying to move to the right. It's going to be like positive increment. OK. And then now we'll pass this argument. Similarly if. OK and now we'll pass this over here. So now what's going to happen is every time you uh, press a key down this kind of it will look for which key is pressed down. And depending upon that it will trigger this method and now one more important stuff that we forgot to do over here is we are supposed to update our screen, right? So let's do that now. So it's going to be like pi game dot display dot flip. So this will update our screen and yeah, and yeah, it, it looks good to go. Okay, so let's execute our code. So as you can see here that now we have our application window. And we also have our block and as we try to move our block right you will see that our block is trying to move like every 10 pixels. So this is what I was saying when you said when I said right if you want to get this flow motion right. So we have to increment the small small values, but now we don't want this trail of blocks right. So in order to remove that what we'll do is we'll go here for our block method. We'll update even our background. So in order to prevent that trailing right we'll also add a new background over here. So once we have added a new background, we'll then be adding our block object and then so on and so forth, right? Like we'll update the screen. So with this, what will happen is in the earlier program, we didn't use this fill over here. So the same old background was carrying on because we are just drawing it over here. We are not asking it to clear, right? So now what will happen in this new application window? We have this old block, right? Every time we execute this screen dot fill, okay, the old block get deleted it's overridden. OK, so on top of this old block we have a new background and within that new background we'll have an updated position. All right, so let us now see if this would work. So as you can see here we can move our block from any position to the other like now if I'm pressing key down. Yes, it absolutely works. Similarly, if I click on the right or left or up as you can see here that it's perfectly working. So similarly we can develop complex games using my games. So with this we come to the end of our my game demo. All right guys with this we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. So if you have any further queries please do mention them in the comment box below. Until next time goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!